Hello and welcome. I hope that you are having a fantastic day. Today, we're going to talk about Bitcoin news. We're going to look at Bitcoin whales. They moved over $186 million yesterday in the last 24 hours. Now, if they're moving it onto exchanges, maybe they're going to sell it. If they were moving it into private wallets, maybe they're going to save it. The important thing is, is which one are they doing? What does it look like they're planning on doing? And how can we use that information to make good decisions? We're going to get into all those details in this video, so be sure to stay tuned. Also, we're going to look at the Bitcoin halving. It spikes on Google search. And BitMEX CEO has predicted a $20,000 Bitcoin before the end of the year. Now, why would he say that? We're going to find out. So, should I buy Bitcoin now or wait? We're going to give you ideas to help you take profits and avoid losses. Can we get this video to 99 likes? Smash that like button. It really helps us out. It makes a huge difference with the Google and the YouTube algorithms. So, I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. This is my opinion. Now, currently, the cryptocurrency market is, is uh, sitting right around $6,907. And as you can see, most of the entire crypto industry is in the red. Now, today, just so that you know, this is being shot at 6.55 a.m. Central Standard Time on April 10th, 2020. Good Friday. So, happy Good Friday to everybody out there. Now, the Bitcoin whales have moved $186 million and the, uh, and the number of crypto whales is multiplying at a rapid rate. So the total number of Bitcoin whales reportedly growing at a rapid rate despite the recent crypto market plunge. According to new analysis by crypto data firm Glassnode, the number of Bitcoin whales with 1,000 Bitcoins or more worth $7 million just hit new levels not seen since 2017. The number of whales increased leading up to last month's market crash and accelerated during and after the crash. The trend implies that despite an uncertain market environment, whales remain confident that now is a good time to be accumulating Bitcoin, BTC, suggesting that they believe there is further room to grow. So in other words, if you had $7 million and you wanted to invest it somewhere, the number of people that are putting $7 million into Bitcoin is on a rapid growth. So in this chart, we can see uh, the, the growth of whales or people that have 1,000 Bitcoins, and we can compare it to the price of Bitcoin. So here in the chart is the run-up to the last all-time high, which happened in December of 2017, where Bitcoin hit $20,000. And then we can kind of see the decline through 2018 and 2019. And then here's where it spiked up to 14000 in 2019. And then the, the progression ever since then. And then this sudden drop is the drop that happened uh, about three or four weeks ago with the pandemic and with uh, the entire economy being shut down and everything else. But during that very period of time, you can see here that the growth started before the pandemic shut down, before the, uh, you know, the crash of March of 2020, and has continued to accelerate ever since then. And so there's a lot of interest in cryptocurrency and Bitcoin in particular among people that have $7 million to invest. Glassnode says that transaction volume is also on the rise, up 23% since last week. Meanwhile, the largest holders of Bitcoin have been extremely active in the last 24 hours. The crypto ledger tracker Whale Alert spotted 12 transactions totaling 25,684 Bitcoin worth $186 million on the move. Now, out of those 12 transactions, six of them sent crypto from an unknown wallet to an exchange where it could potentially be sold on the open market. 
five of the transfers involved crypto moving from an exchange to an unknown wallet. And the final transfer moved Bitcoin from one exchange to another exchange. So, you know, the net result of the whole thing is it looks like the, the whales in terms of them moving these funds around with about half of the funds going into exchanges and about half of the funds going from exchanges into crypto wallets looks like there's really not, I, I don't see that really impacting things a huge amount. Now you can see the total amounts of each of those exchanges, where it went, and um, if you want, you can drill in and get more details uh, from each of these by, by using, in our comment section below, I'm going to give you a link to this article, and then with each of these, you can drill in and get more information on each of those transfers. Uh, accounting for anywhere from 1,500 Bitcoin or 1,000 Bitcoins all the way up to 3,746 Bitcoins. So kind of interesting. And this is useful information if you're investing in Bitcoin. Uh, so I hope that helps you out. New York Power Plant has sold up to 30% of its Bitcoin mining hash rate to institutional buyers. So this is kind of interesting. I didn't realize that a New York power plant actually had its own Bitcoin mining, let alone selling 30% of it off to institutional buyers. So the firm said in an announcement on Friday that the deal brokered by BitOda Digital, Pro Digital preceded the sale of 106,000 terahashes per second of Bitcoin mining power to an undisclosed buyers consisting of hedge funds and family offices. Now the deal would give the buyers ye daily yield of about 1.8 bitcoins worth $13,000 per day in addition to the ownership of the corresponding hardware as assets. In early March it was reported that Greenwich was pr producing an average of 5.5 Bitcoin a day, utilizing 14 megawatts of its total 106 megawatts capacity. And so it's interesting that here you have a power plant in New York that's generating 106 megawatts, but they're utilizing a little, right around 15% of its total power to do Bitcoin mining, and they're generating 5.5 Bitcoin every day. So kind of interesting. Never knew that the state of New York. I, I well actually no. The Bitcoin that power plant is probably not part of the state of New York. So that might be interesting to look up who owns the power plant and get more information about them. The Bit Bitcoin network's total hash rate back then was around 118 million terahashes on average, which means the firm possessed roughly. 357,000 terahashes of computer power at the time. It has plugged in additional equipment over the past several weeks. So not only are they doing a huge amount of Bitcoin mining, but they're increasing the amount of mining that they're doing at this time. So first public block uh, Bitcoin fund listed on the Toronto exchange. Canada Asset Manager 3IQ has become the first firm to launch a fund tied to Bitcoin on the Toronto Stock Exchange after three years of legal wrangling. The Bitcoin fund listed nearly 1.5 million Class A QBTC.U shares on TSX on April 9th. The fund's shares are currently trading around $11 each. On April 10th, the entre entrepreneur and crypto investor Tyler Winklevoss tweeted that the Bitcoin fund's launch on TSX was historic as it is the first public Bitcoin fund listed on a major stock exchange. The Winklevoss twins' crypto exchange, Gemini, is acting as the custodian for the Bitcoin fund. So Gemini is a very, very common cryptocurrency exchange. Uh, the Gemini Exchange is owned by Tyler Winklevoss and his brother. They're a set of twins. And the interesting thing is that the Winklevosses were involved with Facebook uh, and won a lawsuit against Facebook. And then they've taken those millions that they won from that and built the Gemini Exchange. 
and are very, very crypto uh, bullish. They're very, very bullish on cryptocurrency. But then again, you'd have to be if you were going to invest millions of dollars in order to build an exchange and create a custodian service for institutions. So they've been investing and growing and growing their exchange. Um, and they're one of the few exchanges that are listed in New York uh, through the Bitcoin licensing that's done by the state of New York. So uh, really, uh, they do a great job. Bitcoin having sees a huge surge in search volumes. So Google Trends data shows significant increase in the interest in the Bitcoin halving, scheduled for May 13th. And this changes, but we've gotten so close, it's not going to change by month, by, by much. Uh, it wasn't that long ago that the, the expectation was this was going to happen on May 20th. And that was about August of 20, last August. And since then, there have been peaks of where the number of miners have increased dramatically, which made those blocks get mined quicker. And because those blocks got mined quicker, it actually shortened the date. Because the actual Bitcoin having, having happens when a specific block on the blockchain gets mined. Um, and I don't remember the exact numbers, but it's somewhere around every 400,000 blocks or something like that. I could be very wrong. Um, but there's a set number of blocks that get mined and then the halving occurs. So crypto enthusiasts are trying to guess what consequences the event may have. Worldwide, public interest in the event has skyrocketed. According to Google Trends in the last few months, interest has quadrupled and is set to surpass levels seen during the last Bitcoin happening in 2016. And so in this chart, you can see here's the last happening. And you can see how it spikes up in Google searches and then almost immediately drops down. But this time around, it has had a lot of interest on the way into the happening. And you can see by this dotted line, the expectation for the date of the happening is expecting to see a dramatic increase in Google searches. And so that looks good to me. Now, here's the thing. The Google searches and the interest in the happening is part of what led the BitMEX CEO into thinking that $20,000 for Bitcoin in this year is still a reasonable expectation. But he also goes into a lot of other details about why he feels that. So let's take a look. BitMEX CEO predicts stimulus binge will push Bitcoin to $20,000 this year. Uh, Warren's massive drop may come first. The outspoken CEO of the cryptocurrency exchange BitMEX is back with a fresh set of predictions for Bitcoin, BTC, and the global economy. In the new edition of his Crypto Trader Digest, Arthur Hayes says the U.S. government can print enough money to initially weather the fallout from the coronavirus. The Fed can print as much USD as it likes, but the companies and countries that need it the most will not get it. I have no idea on timing, but the strong USD will break the back of the global economy and force a reset. The question is what the new system will look like. All I know is the setup for Bitcoin, the hardest form of digital money, could not be better. All manners of trust have evaporated. In order to solve for demand and supply destruction, governments will embark on the greatest fiscal stimulus binge the world has ever seen. It will not be paid by tax receipts. It can't because 30% of the population is out of a job. It will be paid for by the printing press. So, although Hayes says he's uncertain of the timing of his predictions, he expects a huge Bitcoin rally will happen this year and that brings the leading cryptocurrency back to its all-time high. As violent as the Q1 collapse in asset values was, we have almost 100 years of imbalances to unwind the ancient regime. My end of 2020 price target remains at $20,000. And so he's expecting us to see a significant growth this year for Bitcoin. He's talking about going, you know, like I mentioned earlier in the broadcast, we're currently at $6,910 for a single Bitcoin, and he expects to see that go to $20,000 per Bitcoin. So that's the news for today. 
How can I be of service to you? Do you have any questions? Do you have any thoughts? Look, you know things I don't know. I know things you don't know. But when we share our knowledge, we're going to grow smarter together. I want to grow smarter together with you. Please leave your comments in this comment section below. In the meantime, I hope that you'll like, subscribe, and hodl. So do me a favor. Have a fantastic day.